All right. Hi, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gateswood Health. We're doing a little series on POTS. I started about a week ago, um, and now I'm going to try and pick up on this and really dissect POTS because a lot of you are reading about it. POTS, which stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, is a significant cause of fatigue for a number of my patients. And a lot of you are not diagnosed with this and you may have it. And so POTS is a really interesting entity. You can go back and watch our Facebook Live that I did, I think like 10 days ago with Kathy. And we talked about some of the basic uh, autoimmunity associated with POTS. Hi everyone who's joining, good evening. And we talked about the neural reflexes involved. And in essence, what is POTS in a nutshell? POTS is where you stand up, blood accumulates in the legs, there is not the appropriate neurological reflex to get blood up to the heart. As a consequence, we secrete too much adrenaline, which then speeds up the heart rate, trying to get blood up to the brain. But as a consequence, usually there is associated brain fog, lots of times dizziness, even the component of anxiety. This lack of the appropriate neurological reflex seems to stem from autoimmunity in a large, well, let me say this way, autoimmunity in a proportion of the cases where the immune system is attacking kind of the relay arc, so to speak, from your spinal cord out to the blood vessels or your spinal cord out to the heart, things of that nature, or actually the adrenaline receptors. And so basically your natural production for this reflex of getting blood up to your brain doesn't work. Now, in looking at that, tonight I'm talking about the vagus nerve and how the vagus nerve may be implicated in POTS. Many of you have heard about the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is a wandering nerve throughout our, basically our thorax as well as our abdominal cavity, and it mediates a lot of our quote unquote rest and digest responses. It is in many ways the antithesis or the opposite of the sympathetic reflexes that we have in our body, which are designed to increase blood pressure, basically prepare us to fight or flight. So we have vagus nerve, parasympathetic, rest and digest, simply, sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, simply. There are a lot of nuances to this, and there are a lot of details involved in this. But when it comes to the vagus nerve, the interesting thing is that with POTS, as I mentioned in previous broadcasts, is that a lot of POTS patients report there being a triggering insult to their body. They had a viral infection. They had a bacterial infection. They had the quote unquote stomach flu. They received an immunization. They had a major trauma to their body. They suffered a concussion. They had another major stressor. And the question is, well, how do these events lead to something like POTS? And one of the current thoughts out there is that these inflammatory insults to the body, whether it be an infection, respiratory, GI, other types of immunization, or whether we have you know, a trauma, there's this inflammatory insult. If you have an overwhelming or if you have a really strong bacterial infection, your body's trying to fight it, there's a lot of inflammation associated with that. And it's thought that this inflammation gets out of control, and that may be one of the reasons why the immune system starts going rogue and producing immune cells that attack some of the tissues of our own body, like adrenaline receptors or acetylcholine receptors um, in the different ganglia. Also, there's even research coming out that we can develop angiotensin II uh, antibodies or angiotensin converting enzyme antibodies. So very, very, very interesting. Now, where am I going with this? The vagus nerve, which mediates our rest and digest reflexes, is also being shown to shut off pro-inflammatory cascades in our body. And juxtaposed with that is this excessive sympathetic state associated with POTS. And so with that, we see that there's this inflammatory insult to the body, trauma, infection, 
you know, whatever that I mentioned, concussion, inflammation. And one of the current thoughts out there is there not enough vagal nerve activity and your vagal nerve activity actually drives your spleen to reduce inflammation. So one of the current thought processes are, is there some element of the vagus nerve not firing correctly to regulate the spleen, to shut off the inflammation, and as a result, we get excessive inflammation going throughout the body, and the excessive inflammation then drives further autoimmunity, which further drives the POTS process. One of the features that really supports this is that a lot of POTS patients seem to have gastrointestinal problems, they have dysmotility problems where they're not getting food through their intestines. A lot of POTS patients have this thing called SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and other POTS patients will have just IBS. So is it somehow that we're in this excessive sympathetic state, the vagus nerve isn't working, and because the vagus nerve isn't working, we're not getting our GI tract to work properly, and we're not getting the vagus nerve to fire T cells in our spleen that suppress inflammation. So I kind of want to just bring this up because it's kind of chicken or the egg, so to speak. Uh, there's a lot of that with POTS, and POTS is actually pretty dang complex. If any of you who have POTS out there can appreciate that because you see a lot of different doctors and you're told to wear compression stockings or take this medication and it's not seeming to work because it's so multifactorial. And the snowball is started with a concussion or a trauma or an infection, and then it just seems like the inflammation keeps going and it keeps going. And one thing that maybe you wanna look into is can your vagus nerve be involved in this and that you have decreased vagal nerve activity. One of the exciting areas of the vagus nerve is that they're finding if they stimulate the vagus nerve, they can actually attenuate inflammation in obesity. They're even seeing that they can change the way the liver releases glucose if you stimulate the vagus nerve excessively, which is pretty dang fascinating. And this is one of the, the seminal philosophical viewpoints of a lot of natural um, healthcare alternatives is this element of maybe we need to pay attention more to our rest and digest state and be cognizant of our stress responses. We living in contemporary society, whether you're in America or you're in another country where a lot of us are pushed to drive, 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 work, 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 work. A lot of us are in this fight, fight state from morning till night and we're not in the rest and digest state which really drives the vagus nerve. So something to be attentive to, if you have a lot of stress in your life and you have POTS, maybe give this some consideration. I'm not saying that this is the end all be all, but it is interesting research how the vagus nerve talks to your spleen, specifically T cells in your spleen that suppress inflammation. And it's very interesting that the adrenaline, which is high in POTS, that that also drives inflammatory pathways in the body as well, which I didn't mention until now. So that can be one mechanism. You have this hyperadrenaline state or hyperadrenergic state, which then drives more inflammation, more pro-inflammatory chemicals referred to as cytokines, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-6, things like this, that then keep this whole mess of dysfunction going. So something to consider, I'm gonna to try to be back later on this week, maybe tomorrow night, we'll see how it goes. I would love to be back tomorrow night to talk a little bit more about other nuances of POTS. Last week I talked about hormones, and I really wanna kinda of create a full picture this week about postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome so all of you can start to understand things better. So thank you all of you who joined on this late at night at 11.34 and appreciate it. And We'll be talking to you soon. Okay. Have a good night.